Hi everyone, welcome back to the layer 3 curriculum. My name is Arul Richardson and I'm from the Technical Knowledge Management Group and I will be the lead instructor for this onboarding program. So in this video, we are going to talk about different types of OSPF areas. So let's begin. So in order to understand and explain the different types of OSPF areas, I will be taking help of this network which is right behind me over here. So this is a network with um, 10 routers and let's say that all of these 10 routers has or to be more specific let's leave one router let's say 9 routers has OSPF enabled and this network is broken into small clusters which are called areas. So let's say that this specific portion belongs to one area and let's say that this portion of the network belongs to another area and let's say that this portion of the network belongs to one area so basically let's say that this belongs to area number zero this belongs to area number one and this belongs to area number Two. I have left router number 9 in purpose and you know why because you already saw the area video so I will talk about it in a moment when I try to explain you different types of areas. So now we know that uh, we need area number 0 we know that router number 3 is called as ABR also router number 4 is termed as ABR so these are the types of uh, OSPF speaking routers. Now let's see what are the types of OSPF areas. The very first type that we are going to discuss is a stub area. Okay, so OSPF stub area. So what is OSPF stub area? Let's say for example, I choose area number one as stub area. So a stub area is an OSPF area which blocks LSA type number five. Okay, so LSA type five is blocked. Now, if you're wondering what is LSA type five, you know that LSA type five is for external routes, meaning that let's say to router number two, I have a router which is running RIP as routing protocol and when these routes of the RIP routing is being redistributed via router number 2 into OSPF then those routes are carried in OSPF using LSA type number 5 and LSA type number 5 is called external LSA so external route LSA so router number 3 which is my ABR which connects area number 0 and area number 1 will block LSA type number 5 when area number 1 is configured as a stub area. Now that is stub area. Let's discuss about the second type of area. I'll use a new color. The second type of area is an enhancement to stub area and that is called total stub area. Okay, so we know that a stub area blocks LSA type number 5. So a total stub area blocks LSA type number 5. First, it is a stub area, okay, but it is more than a stub area. So by default, like a stub area, a total stub area blocks LSA type 5. In addition to it, it also blocks LSA type number 3. So if you're wondering what is LSA type number 3, LSA type number 3 is inter-area prefix LSA. So all of the inter-area routes, like for example, the ABR over here, which is router number 4, will share the routes from area number 2 to area number 0 using LSA type number 3. Now this LSA type number 3 will reach router number 3, which is an ABR. Router number 3 will share these inter-area prefixes with area number 1 using LSA type number 3. But if this area is selected as or is configured as a total stub area, then the total stub area will block 
both LSA type number 5 and LSA type number 3. What will happen with this is the routers in area number 1 will have a smaller routing table. So basically the routers which are really really with very less processing capacities are used in the stub area. The next type of area, let me use another color, is called NSSA, not NASA, it's called NSSA, which is not so stubby area. So not so stubby area is a stub area, but not so much stub. I know that sounds really funny, but that is what it is actually. Now let's bring router number 9 into picture. We know that router number 9 is running RIP as my routing protocol. So if I want to share the RIP information into OSPF, which means that I want to redistribute RIP routes into OSPF, it has to be done by this router, which is called as ASBR, Autonomous System Border Router, because one of its interface is an OSPF and it's also running RIP simultaneously. So this is Autonomous System Border Router. So when the RIP routes from router number 5 are redistributed into OSPF, it is using LSA type 5 because this is external prefixes. But when this is a not so stubby area, it inherits the feature of stub area, which is it will block external LSA, which is LSA type 5. But what if I want to still send my external prefixes? That is where the not so stubby area comes into picture. So the not so stubby area, instead of using the LSA type 5 to share the external prefixes, it will use a new LSA, which is called LSA type 7. Okay. So now router number 5 will redistribute RIP routes into OSPF and will share the information to ABR using LSA type 7 and not LSA type 5. Such an area is called a not so stubby area. So this LSA type number 7 will go to router number 3. Router number 3 which is an ABR will share these information with area number 0 using LSA type 5. Okay, it will convert LSA 7 to 5 and then the regular process as it is. Okay. So a stub area which converts um, external prefix into LSA type 7. So instead of using LSA type 5, if a stub area is using LSA type 7 for uh, external prefixes, then that specific area is termed as not so stubby area. And then you have the fourth type of area, which is again very easy to understand. Let me use another color which is type number four, is total not so stubby area. Yeah, that's that's how the name is. So total not so stub area is like a total stub area, but with a not so stubby area features, which means that it is a total stub area, meaning it will block LSA type five and LSA type three. Okay. So a total not so stubby area, just like a total stub area will block LSA type 3 and LSA type 5. But if it wants to send external prefixes, which is LSA type 5, then it will send them using LSA type 7. And that is termed as total not so stubby area. So the LSA type number 7 from router number 5 will go to router number 3, which is an ABR. The ABR will convert this LSA type 7 into LSA type 5 and will share it with the remaining part of the network. And that is total not so stubby area. And that's it. All that you need to know about different types of OSPF areas. So I hope that this video was easy and informative. I'll see you in the next part of the video where I will explain more and more IP stuffs related to ECI and PT. Until then, thank you and thanks for watching.